Sierra Leone, where eight years of civil war have left a cruel legacy. In a shack in downtown Freetown, an 11-year-old boy prepares for school. When civil strife broke out in 1991, Sharif Koroma was three years old. His father was killed in the war, and the boy now lives with his brother. In July this year, Sharif went to school for the first time. But he can hardly read or write, for he is no ordinary child. Behind the face of the boy lurks a terrible secret. Another day starts with the children singing their country's national anthem. Sharif shows his respect with a salute. It's a military custom he learned deep in the jungles of Sierra Leone. In June, the headmaster received a letter from a Catholic priest. Take Sharif Karoma into your school. The boy wants to start a new life and needs an education. Sharif was a boy soldier. Earlier this year, he commanded a group of boys on an extraordinary mission to kill innocent civilians and cut off their hands and feet. <laughs> In July last year, rebels attacked the town in northern Sierra Leone where Sharif lived with his parents and ten brothers and sisters. The village was destroyed. His father was later killed. Sharif went to hide in the jungle where the rebels found him. Most of these young children, you know, come from very poor and destitute homes. And when you employ them, you know, you give them food and then they are drugged. You know, because they are high on drugs, they can be easily manipulated and brainwashed. And they don't have enough responsibility, they don't have families. So if you send him on any mission, he will just obey without thinking twice. Did they inject him with the cocaine or what? I injected him with the cocaine. I was injected. Sometimes I was also was given to drink. These are the marks of the injections. So you see, I have many of them. That's why they committed most of the atrocities, like chopping off the limbs of people, cutting their heads, you know, burning houses and so on. Sharif was particularly brave and was soon promoted to captain. His commander was called General Mack. Sharif acquired the battle name of Captain Cuthan. Yes, I cut off the, 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 the hands of many children. The victims of Sharif Karoma and the other rebel units are to be found right across Sierra Leone. It is estimated that the limbs of 10,000 people were amputated during the Civil War. You lost a limb, you've lost your life, you've lost your livelihood. Isatu Kabul is 13 years old and one of seven children of a farmer. In January this year, she was in Freetown visiting her aunt when the rebels came. There were men and there were boys, carrying guns, axes and machetes. Put them quick, 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 then go to line me, then put four and rebels among me. You want one bubble and behold the axe. We cannot again. Pay attention, Victoria. We cannot. A few weeks ago, Isati went to school again for the first time since her hands were cut off. 
She and her family now live in desperate conditions in an amputee camp in Freetown. Their farm and village were also burned down, and they survive on the handouts of aid organizations. Sierra Leone was once a prosperous British colony, established in 1787 as a new home for freed slaves from Britain and the United States. It was once the intellectual center of West Africa and as the oldest university in Sub-Sahara Africa. There are four and a half million Sierra Leoneans, a colorful people, who lived in relative peace with one another until 1991. In March of that year, this man, former Army Corporal Fodi Sanku and his Revolutionary United Front, or RUF, went into exile into neighboring Liberia and started a civil war. It became one of the bloodiest conflicts in Africa's history. I am Corporal Fodi Sebana Sanko. People call me Pa Pape. Why? Children, big people. I'm not Mandela, I'm Papi of Australia. In the years that followed, Sierra Leone suffered a series of coups and military dictatorships. The country was destroyed and its people devastated by civil war. It became the poorest nation on earth, with a life expectancy of only 37. And yet, it is a country blessed with a wealth of natural resources and some of the richest diamond deposits in the world. Many say that it's precisely these riches and the greed that accompany it that have kept the flames of conflict burning. The people of this country, Sierra Leone, they have been crying for war. And their cry was answered by God Almighty. In 1996, multi-party elections were held and won by Ahmed Tejan Kaba. But 14 months later, he was overthrown in a coup by Major Johnny Paul Koroma, leader of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, or AFRC. A Nigerian-led military force called ECOMOG intervened, and Kaba was returned to power in February 1998. The civil war intensified, with the Nigerians and Kaba fighting the RUF and the AFRC. I want to be a leader for the people of Sierra Leone. And I am the leader. I'm going to be the leader of the revolution. Fodi Sanko and the RUF are responsible for some of the worst atrocities committed in modern-day Africa. The trademark of the RUF was the amputation of limbs. Many of these atrocities were committed by young children. We'll take care of them. We'll have what we call these unfortunate children who find themselves in short situation. Are we to kill them? No. Why they would, are with us. Why would these boys lie about what they did for you? They are being spoon fed. They had particular squads that were dedicated to burning houses, to amputations, to executions. So this implies a tremendous amount of organization and command responsibility on the part of all levels of the RUF. Are you proud of your soldiers? Of course. They are not soldiers. These are freedom fighters. He has been at the head of an organization, the RUF, who have committed some of the worst war crimes that we have seen in our time. In January this year, Freetown was burning as the rebels invaded the city from the east. The Nigerians and the Sierra Leone army were caught unawares and the rebels occupied most of the city. A cameraman from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Services was trapped in the occupied area and filmed the conflict. An orgy of violence accompanied the rebel advance to the capital and the ensuing battle with the Nigerians. Rebel soldiers, some as young as seven, roamed the streets, burning, killing, looting, and maiming. 
Apa-apanya kok gitu. Nah, kan kok mana ngasang kalian suka pakai masih gift kok. Aku ini dia beli kek pasti buka kole kata kok. Kok nak cap dah bung ni kat cap kata. Sanko's RUF rebels were largely responsible for the killing and maiming of civilians. AFRC rebels, supporting former military dictator Johnny Paul Karoma, soon joined in the destruction of Freetown. As the rebels rampaged through the city, hundreds of bodies were dumped at cemeteries and at the state morgue. According to the government pathologist, 7,300 corpses were officially buried. That was a uh the greatest shock for the people of, of Freetown that time um, to be seeing um, their own friends and relatives, countrymen, townsmates being gathered like ants and packed in front of the, of the mortuary entrance. The mayhem on the streets of Freetown continued for almost three weeks. They must have power to check or sleep with them. And you must make guy. Lama must put the re. I see my corner that attack your cookie. Come and scratch me. So fun to hear my fun to hear. I'm so mom, mom, you know, mom, this is a cheering up. Lama Sarah and his book, cheering up. Call and sing. I yet to talk. Coco, coco, best. Uncle and she went to my mom. When I say we can't say it's bitterness of the war. I shouldn't tell you that the court court we had a silo go to. Why did they why did they chop the people's hands off? Why was it necessary to do it? Come work. Come work. They say, hey, who is this? I say I'm a mechanic. I tell them I put my ID card to sue these people. They say no. They say now you go and cut your head off. I say for why? I say, what, what happened when you cut my head off? Try to talk to these people. They will try to cut my hand off. I will break them. When I break them, then go to the foot. Come cut. Lansana Sase is 50 years old and a former customs official. He was hiding with his family in his house when the rebels arrived. Among them were young boys. They took him and his family out of the house. As a gentleman, you've come for the peace. Don't mind my house. Please, we are in peace with you. He said, Pa, we burn the house here. So the house was burnt. And even all my properties. He said, sit down, Papa. I sat down. I said, would you cut your hand? I said, gentlemen, don't cut my hands off. I beg you. I am with the peace with you people. He took the axe and Turn it on my hands. It goes off. I said, gentlemen, leave the other hands. So they caught the other hands. I was lying on the floor when after all these activities have been done, cutting my two hands, they went away. I followed them. I said, gentlemen, you damaged me. Kill me. Kill me. Instead of leaving me with my hands off, kill me. They said, no. They bounced me on the ground. My teeth with a hammer was taken away. You see that? Many people died as a result of their wounds, but others miraculously survived. As the Nigerians drove the rebels back, the wounded, injured, and amputees started making their way to Kanot Hospital. It was a very big shock for us to see people with their hands hanging on the skins, children with their, arm, their arms amputated, machete wounds, gunshot wounds, people with their noses cut off, their ears cut off, some with their lips cut off, you know, and all the unimaginable injuries that were inflicted by Sierra Leoneans on their fellow Sierra Leoneans. <laughs> In all my years of practice, that was the first time that I saw my fellow country men and women with those type of injuries, you know. And uh, had I not been a doctor, 
you know, probably I would have run away. Lalas. So, it's not be sadly authoritative to like a crew. I cheap well or forgive me. Because I mean, I saw me, Mamma Tala Bob. I challenge anyone to prove that the RUF committed a shot at us. So, do you want to say to me that all the people without hands in the MPT camp are lying when they say that your forces committed those atrocities? What is your name? I can say I do sometimes, I say you did it. This is Africa. People are not honest, people are not sincere. The evidence is overwhelming. Um, through testimonies, you know, people, people tell stories, they have recognized some of the soldiers, the soldiers identify themselves as being members of the RUF. My forces never use matches, no. That is the argument. So all the people in the MPT camp are lying? When they of course they are lying. It's a makeup of the government, mind you. Why would they lie? To tarnish the reputation of the RUF or destroy us. Three weeks after the rebel invasion of Freetown, the Nigerians retook the capital. More than 5,000 people were killed in the offensive, and 5,800 homes and buildings were burned down. As the rebels fled into the mountains, soldiers started searching for suspects. This young man was accused by his neighbor of burning down her house. Nigerian soldiers interrogated, charged, tried, and convicted him on the streets of the capital. Many other suspects were rounded up in a similar way. According to witnesses, hundreds of suspected rebels were summarily executed by soldiers. Anybody who was around to have witnessed all the violence perpetrated, whether you're a victim or just a witness, it affected everybody. Shortly after the January offensive, President Kaba embarked on a mission to bring peace to his country. In May, the warring factions agreed to a ceasefire. On July 7, a formal peace agreement was signed in the Togolese capital of Lome. The agreement calls for, amongst other things, the disarmament of rebel soldiers, a United Nations peacekeeping force, and democratic elections. The two rebel leaders, Fodi Sanku and Johnny Paul Karoma, have recently returned to Freetown. An uneasy peace has settled over Sierra Leone. The prospects for peace in Sierra Leone rest in the hands of two men, Fodi Sanku and Johnny Paul Karoma. The one is a former military dictator and the other a warlord. They are today effectively vice presidents of Sierra Leone. They live in state mansions and are protected by the very Nigerian soldiers they fought so bitterly only a few months ago. Believe you me, the next general election we're going to win it. We've won already. And if you don't win? We're going to win. Do you want to be president of Sierra Leone? Well, as of now, I'm uh, preaching peace. I'm talking about peace. And I think you are talking about politics. I'm not talking about politics. I'm not talking about war. I'm talking about peace. I say we thought for the Sanko, no peace in this country. So as long as I'm in Freetown, there is peace. And if you're not in Freetown, there is war. The Lome Peace Accord calls for the disarming of all rebel soldiers. But across the country, reception centers set up and controlled by the United Nations are standing virtually empty. OK, the form. Yes. What about this? Um, <laughs> by the beginning of this week, only about a 1,000 rebel soldiers had given themselves up. They were mostly members of Johnny Paul Karoma's AFRC. While Fodi Sanku is preaching this armament in public, he told us a different story. Have you given an order like that? Oh, not yet. You need structures according to the Lome Peace Accord. When these structures are in place, then we can disarm. But according to the Peace Accord, you are supposed to disarm your soldiers. Me? No. It has been relatively quiet in Sierra Leone now for several months. Most roads have been reopened, 
and people can get their products to the markets again. But the Lomay Peace Accord is under serious threat. There are reports of heavy fighting between the rebel soldiers of Sanku and Koroma in the northern town of Makani. According to the reports by human rights organizations, villages have been attacked and looting, raping, murder and amputations continue. We are defending the peace process, so the people should not worry. How serious are the problems in the north? It is very, very serious. No, that is fabrication. McKinney is quiet, I see. Freetown. There is no fighting there. There was a message that we monitored that the RAF personnel are moving towards McKinney. 500 armed men with one armored car and one twin barrel. All this fabrication lies to tarnish or destroy the image of the RAF. Maybe Corporal Sanko should pay a visit to the Connaught Hospital in downtown Freetown. Ward 3 bears testimony to the ongoing atrocities in Sierra Leone. These are civilian casualties who have been brought from Makeni to Freetown. The Lomay Peace Accord also guarantees blanket amnesty for all soldiers and rebels, even those who committed the worst atrocities. <laughs> the victims are supposed to forgive and forget, but for them, there will never be justice. I mean, imagine you've lost your limb. You've been disabled for life. There is no way you can cope, especially in a very difficult world like ours. Yes, I will forgive them, but I will not forget. Yes. Their future is extremely poor. Poor in the sense that, you know, unless they go out begging, otherwise there is no way they can get a job or survive. And, and forgive them. Now. For now. I forgive them. Do you have anything to ask for forgiveness? Forgiveness for what? To make a revolution? Your ancestors made it in America, in Britain, in Europe. The victims of Sierra Leone are of all ages and from all sides. In an office in Freetown, Catholic priest father Theo Momo debriefs two boy soldiers. He runs a center for these children. You could tell me now how, what is your age? Okay, Siko is 10 plus. Okay, so he kills so many that he doesn't even know the amount that he killed. Okay, so. Father Theo was the man who found Sharif Koroma, reunited him with his brother, and sent him to school. Okay, he was a spy, a, a boy sent as a spy. Now, what do you know you want? In a five week period in September and October, Father Theo registered 411 boy soldiers who had come to Freetown. There is very little treatment for either the victims or the perpetrators. This is where the worst victims of Sierra Leone's civil war are incarcerated. The Kissy Mental Hospital in Freetown is the oldest in sub-Sahara Africa. Almost 200 victims of war are held behind the high walls. Conditions at the moment are very desperate, desperate in the sense that, you know, we have very many psychiatric patients because of the war and the facilities have dwindled. There is virtually no medicine, little food and few staff. People are chained to their beds to prevent them from escaping. Dr. Nahim is the only local psychologist or psychiatrist in the country. Well, the patients we have here are the chronic, helpless and hopeless patients who might be dangerous to society. These are the ones who keep here. Sharif Koroma is lucky that some of his family are still alive and that he goes to school. But he is also haunted by his memories. <laughs> The picture of violence stays in your memory for the rest of your life. There is no way you can get it off your memory. You can bury it in your subconscious, but it's alive in you all of the time until you die. 
As Sierra Leone approaches the millennium, peace is balanced on a knife edge. But while leaders scramble for power, life has to go on. In downtown Freetown, a traditional wedding takes place. The groom is not present as he now lives in America. His brother stands in for him. A few months ago, a celebration like this was unthinkable. Join us again next week for another special assignment.